Section 3. Indeterminacy and Uncertainty. We can now consider in more detail some aspects of quantum physics which have tended to undermine the so-called scientific consensus with regard to researching mind and consciousness. We can look first at indeterminism. Quantum physics asserts that on the microscale of atoms and similar entities, it is not generally possible to predict individual events with certainty. As regards events on that scale, predictions can generally only produce probabilities. However, as Hodgson points out, quote, this does not involve general inconsistency with accurate predictions of events on the macro scale, since such events generally involve huge numbers of events on the micro scale, combined in such a way that uncertainties cancel out and probabilities on the micro scale can become virtual certainties on the macro scale, end quote. Hodgson is careful to point out that, quote, indeterminacy of predictions on the micro scale can produce similar indeterminacy on the macro scale. Indeed, when any measurement of an individual micro event is made, this is precisely what happens. The technique of making such a measurement involves producing a macro effect from the individual micro event so that it is possible on the macro scale to distinguish between the occurrence of the individual micro event from its non occurrence. Accordingly, the macro event which represents the result of the measurement, such as the click of a Geiger counter, is unpredictable to the same extent as is the corresponding micro event, such as an individual emission due to radioactive de decay. The projection of indeterminacies on the microscale, onto the macroscale, can occur naturally as well. For example, it has been shown that a cell on the retina of the human eye can respond detectably to a single photon of light. End quote, Hodgson 91. Dana Zohar points out that the principal founders of quantum mechanics, Niels Bohr and Weiner, Weiner Heisenberg, argued that fundamental reality itself is essentially indeterminate. In other words, quote, there is no clear fixed underlying something to our daily existence that can ever be known. Everything about reality is and remains a matter of probabilities. An electron might be a particle or might be a wave. It might be in this orbit or it might be in that. Indeed, anything might happen. We can only predict such things on the basis of what is most probable given the overall constraints of any given experimental situation. End quote. In the quantum world, reality is nothing but a collection of possibilities. Consequently, we are left with what Zohar calls the central unanswered problem of quantum theory. Quote, How can anything in this world ever become actual or fixed. It is the very opposite of the dilemma raised by Newton's clockwork universe, 
in which there is no scope for the new. Reading Newton, we have to ask, how can anything ever happen? With the Bohr-Heisenberg interpretation of quantum mechanics, the great problem becomes, how can anything ever be? And quantum physics involves not only indeterminism in relation to predictions of the future, but also uncertainty or indeterminism in relation to existing states. Hodgson says, quote, Heisenberg's celebrated uncertainty principle asserts that a micro-entity cannot at the same time have a precise position and a precise motion or momentum. This principle is sometimes presented as if it followed simply as a practical matter from the process of measurement, from the disturbance necessarily caused to micro-entities by the interaction necessary for measurement. However, in fact, it follows from a precise mathematical relationship, which in turn follows as a matter of necessity from the mathematics of quantum theory itself. In other words, the mathematics of quantum theory entails the uncertainty principle, while the practical considerations associated with the process of measurement prote protect the theory by preventing disproof of it by way of achieving measured results conflicting with the theory's mathematics, end quote. Zohar says that according to the uncertainty principle, quote, the wave and particle descriptions of being preclude one another, while both are necessary to get a full grasp of what being is, only one is available at any given time. Either we can measure the exact position of something like an, elect an electron when it manifests itself as a particle, or we can measure its momentum, its speed, when it expresses itself as a wave. But we can never get a measurement of both exactly at the same time. Hodgson uses an example from classical statistical mechanics to demonstrate the reality of quantum uncertainty. He says that in classical mechanics, quote, calculations are often made concerning what we called statistical mixtures. Such mixtures are represented by mathematical objects which can indicate that one or the other of a number of possible states of affairs actually exists and also indicate their respective probabilities on the basis of what is known about them, end quote. As Hodgson points out, these classical mathematical operations differ from those in quantum mechanics in that they, quote, convey that there is a deficiency in knowledge. One of the possibilities does in fact exist, but which one is not known? All that is known is respective probabilities for the various alternatives. On the other hand, while quantum mechanical state vectors show or enable calculation of probabilities for various possible states of affairs, no deficiency of knowledge is conveyed. Unless and until one of the possibilities is established as a certainty by measurement, no one of them actually exists, except as a possibility. 
what exists is a superposition of all the possibilities weighted by their probability amplitudes with mutual interference. Hodgson tries to elucidate the nature of quantum uncertainty via the mathematics of quantum measurement. He says that the mathematics, quote, does not indicate or represent position or motion in any direct way. What it does in substance is to enable calculation of the probability of the particle in question being found to have a position or momentum to a greater or lesser degree of precision if an appropriate measurement is made. What, if anything, this mathematical object actually represents in the absence of any measurement being made, that is, what the quantum physical state really is, is a matter of controversy, as we will see. Certainly, however, it does not represent a particle having a definite position and motion as contemplated by classical physics and common sense views of the world. And this is not to say that the mathematical object is in any sense incomplete. The view generally accepted by physicists is that it contains all the information which there can be concerning the particle's position and motion. So Hodgson wants to make it clear that uncertainty is an essential feature of quantum reality and not, as is sometimes suggested, just a consequence of the difficulty of measurement at the micro level. Quote, it should be noted carefully that the uncertainty principle follows mathematically from the mathematics of quantum mechanics and in particular from the nature of the mathematical representation of the state of a particle. It is a necessary consequence of the quantum theory itself. It is not, as some suggestions, some discussions might suggest, merely a practical consequence of the disturbance caused to a particle by measuring its position or momentum, end quote. And Zohar emphasizes the full implications of quantum uncertainty for our conception of reality, quote. It replaces the old Newtonian determinism where everything about physical reality is fixed, determined, and measurable with a vast porridge of being, where nothing is fixed or fully measurable, where everything remains indeterminate, somewhat ghostly, and just beyond our grasp. It's as though we were forever condemned to seeing only shadows in the fog. The full nature of this quantum indeterminism goes straight to the heart of the central philosophical problem raised by quantum mechanics, the nature of reality itself.